This podcast is not safe for work and will feature movie spoilers. It will feature scenes described of a graphic nature. It will contain language which most listeners may find offensive. Welcome to the podcast Under the Stairs. Hi everyone and welcome to the podcast Under the Stairs. I'm your host Duncan McLeish, welcome to the show. Up on this episode we're looking at a brand new horror title just released in the UK. This has been on my most anticipated movie of 2024 in the horror genre list since it was announced months ago. This is of course the brand new Osgood Perkins movie, Long Legs. You will know all about it because it's pretty much everywhere that you're turning around now through his viral marketing campaign, his continued marketing campaign. It's a almost synchronised release schedule of reviews to its dizzyingly high scores just now on Rotten Tomatoes in both the critics and the audience. Uh, so yeah, we're going to be discussing um, Long Legs and we're going to be doing it non-spoiler because the movie's just been released. So, as always, let me kick out a little caveat at the start. If you want to know absolutely nothing about this movie, which I would say is the best way to go in to watch this movie, then please, please, please uh, feel free to hit stop on this video right now. Go away and check it out, come back, and you can always hit play whenever you want and catch up with my views then. If you've already seen it, then please listen on. And if you don't care about spoilers, which I know some of you listeners that will be your want and then just keep watching don't say you weren't warned so yeah long legs I am uh, very excited about this one for for various different reasons as I kind of preamble before we jump in to the trailer I will say that I've been a huge fan of Osgood Perkins since uh, Blackcoats.org aka February if you're in the UK Um, since that movie came out I utterly thought that movie was beguiling for, for a debut, uh, it kind of floored me at how how strong it felt as a debut, how well it was cast, its story, how sad it actually is as a horror movie. Um, I followed him on to his second feature, which came out via Netflix, um, uh, the Pretty Things movie, I can't remember the full name, I am the Pretty Things that something something. Um, and it wasn't as good as um, Blackcoat's Daughter, but I liked it. I had a lot going on about it that made me kind of get behind it and I, I thought the performance was really good. Um, I didn't think it was as good as his debut and uh, we didn't have to wait a huge amount of time until we got Gretel and Hansel, which was his last feature before this one, which came out during COVID and as a result didn't get many eyes on it. It is absolutely excellent. I thought it, it was a movie that made my top 10 of the year that year, uh, very strongly positioned near the top and... I continually wonder about how dark and gothic and smart and clever and how perfect an art house horror movie that actually is. So Osgood was like, for me, it was three for three and uh, Long Legs has made it, spoiler alert, four for four. Um, this is hands down, as we stand right now, my favourite horror movie that I've seen this year. Let me give you some details on it though and I'll be doing it after you've seen the teaser trailer. So I'll be right back right after this. You could have made my size me, but you didn't. And now that has led to all of this. Long legs in theaters, July twelfth. Rated R. And welcome back. So you've just seen the teaser trailer for Long Legs and as bizarre and non-informative as that is, um, we're going to try and not spoil anything in this review, but to do that I need to give you the details. So look at the pretty pictures while I read stuff from the internet. Long Legs is written and directed by Oz Perkins. It stars Mika Monroe, Nicolas Cage, Blair Underwood, Alicia Watt, uh, Michelle Cho Lee, uh, Dakota Dalby, Lauren Akala, Kian Shilka, 
and some other folks in there. Synopsis for this one is listed on IMDb is in pursuit of a serial killer, an FBI agent uncovers a series of occult clues that she must solve to end his terrifying killing spree. So, Long Legs is, in its simplest description, is a throwback movie to the 1990s. Like, probably like the first half of the 90s, where we weren't just getting like straight out horror movies, we kind of existed in the post satanic panic glow of kind of thrillers which probably should have been horror movies with police enforcement officials being tertiarily involved with um, Satanism and the occult. So I can already think of movies that, that kind of cover a lot of that, whether it's a movie like Fallen which uses kind of voodoo-esque practices to jump between bodies or a movie like The First Power which is, you know, kind of leaning towards the, 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 the kind of occult as well. Um, there was a fascination about it specifically in the, the first half of the 90s that and you know FBI agents who are tracking down serial killers so everything from the big one being Silence of the Lambs but you have movies like Copycat, The Bone Collector you know there's loads on where profiling became interesting and a lot of that spun from the unlikely success of Manhunter, uh, the movie by Michael Mann, based on the Tom Harris book about uh, Detective Paul Graham, Hannibal Lecter, etc, etc, etc. There was a sea change move in the early 2000s, away from... Kind of, that almost follows, and this should just come to me as a thought in my head, like, the kind of almost emulates, and this could be an interesting discussion piece for someone much more intelligent than I, but when you look at Jallo, that's right, get Jallo into the conversation, in the 70s in Italy, Giallo was all focused about the killings and the murders and then ultimately became, it morphed into the Plezzateschi sort of movies where it was more police procedurals and you were following that side of things um, and that kind of naturally picked up the baton and when you look at the 80s you got a ton of slasher movies and horror movies and then it kind of morphed into the 90s and then it was more focused on the police trying to solve the crimes, you get a lot of thrillers where you're following detectives and agents and police officers and FBI and whatnot. And I wonder if there's a there's a cause and effect in cinema that audiences naturally navigate to the procedural aspect rather than the the stock slash aspect of movies after a period of time. Someone much smarter than me will write a paper on that, or it's probably already out there. Uh, but yeah, it reminded me of that specifically. Um, I will say this. Nicolas Cage is in this movie, and I don't want to give too much detail about it, but I will say that Nicolas Cage, in the last 20 years, I think has churned out some of the best performances, specifically in this genre, that I think any actor has without, like, dropping the ball loads. Like, he is consistently delivering incredible performances, and this one, it is fucking out there. I mean, this is an out there performance, gives it his all, is not scared to look foolish. Um, I kind of love that about him, but at the same time, it works. He, he plays a character that is very unsettling to watch. Um, it's just, It kind of delves in a lot, toes dangling a lot of pulls here. Um, there are certainly elements I mentioned of Silence of the Lambs. There's elements of weirdly there's elements of Twin Peaks in here um, like one shot specifically in this which I was like that is right out of the mind of David Lynch um, but it, it follows like the the procedural aspects of a lot of the movies you, you see in the 90s on top of that as well um, a lot of the camera work reminded me of things like Exorcist 3 uh, those kind of long static shots where things are happening in the distance and you as the audience feel like you're being drawn in. Um, it reminded me, like the driving, like the way the cameras were placed while the cars were driving reminded me of things like Manhunter, the most recent kind of Netflix TV show which follows the birth of the uh, the behavioural profiling unit in Quantico uh, with the FBI. There's a lot of the camera work was very Fincher-esque. Um... I also get the feeling that from watching this movie that I'm scratching the surface with the amount of detail. I picked out loads, but me and Baz went to see it and when we were talking outside the cinema, he had picked up things I hadn't and it kind of made me think, oh, there's, this movie's going to be like densely layered with a lot of detail that's going to 
need to be revisited by me to, to, to kind of check out. Uh, Mika Munro is brilliant in this. Um, she's playing a much more subdued character than I've seen before, but it actually really works for her performance. Um, there's a nervousness and almost a reluctance a reluctance to actually embrace the ability she seems to have or the connection that she seems to have made to this series of serial murders. Um, I think the pacing is deliberate but never boring. I think the script is smart. Um, almost absurd at times. There are moments that you feel like you could almost laugh at but they hold the line of you never really tripping over that and if it is it's due to nervous laughter. I think the set design and camera composition is as close to perfect for a modern horror movie that you're going to get. It's not in a hurry to do its thing and as a result I kind of felt like the longer the movie went on the more unsettled I was. This should get an Oscar for sound design. Um, the sound design in this movie is mind blowing. Like you, almost from about five minutes into it I had this constant sense of unease which just continued to permeate through the entire viewing process. Um, it was kind of wonderful I, like just at how unsettled I was by a movie where like I said before its pacing is deliberately kind of it is deliberately set in its stall out like a, a, like a movie like Hereditary for example doesn't get to the goods for quite a long while but you are constantly just uneasy watching it Long Legs is kind of that as well um, I even like its ending I think this movie ends super strong I have read some things since watching it because I kept away from spoilers uh, that some people haven't really liked the ending because it maybe doesn't explain too much of what's going on and these are the same people that moan that, you know, trailers give too much away and uh, movies are being dumbed down for audiences. So you can have it always. I kind of like the way this kind of ends in a place where you can go and do your own detective work or not. And talking about doing your own detective work, this literally has like one of those exciting viral marketing campaigns. There's a fake old school 90s website. Uh, set up which discusses all the murders, crime scene photos and all the rest. It's a ton of fun. I played around with it for about an hour yesterday. There's telephone numbers you can phone where you get weird voice clips and um, there's a, there's a, an art to doing that in the background to, to bring all that stuff together. You've got to assume that's less Osgood Perkins and more Neon, the distributing company, who they themselves have been super interesting. A24 gets a lot of oxygen. I don't think Neon gets nearly as much oxygen as they probably should. I think they've been kind of churning away some um, some kind of fucking awesome horror movies of late genre stuff that's just really, really kind of dark and kind of powerful and loud and brash and bright and all, like all the oxymoronic juxtaposed terms I can use to describe their stuff. But um, Osgood to me is just a fascinating guy. I think he's already working on his next movie. I'm sure I heard a rumour about that one and I'm there for it. I think he is a, an excellent director. Um, I really didn't have any gripes with this. And trust me, I've been thinking about it before. The elements where I'm, I, I think maybe it delves a little bit more into cliche, I would expect for what it's actually going for. It doesn't feel like someone's able to try to dumb down something to make a 90s kind of horror thriller. I actually felt like those beats make sense within the confines of the movie. Um, I don't think anything came as a huge surprise here. I even picked up on the end and later than I generally would in a movie. It was maybe about 10 minutes before the end before I pieced all the stuff together as to who was what and possibly what might be going on. Um, but that once again just made me feel happy. It's the same way when I was watching movies back in the day in the 90s and you kind of, you're like, oh, but that person's a killer. And then you just kind of sat, wait to be proved right. It's kind of the same way here as well. Um, it's disturbing, but never goes too far. And I'll say that as well, which I was surprised about. And that's to Osgood Perkins' credit. It's very, very easy to make this one a lot nastier than it actually is. And the movie manages to hold a line between showing you things and making your brain do some work for that. So yeah, I thought Long Legs was a brilliant movie. Like I said before, as it stands this year, my top three horror movies are probably Long Legs at one. Um, at two, it's I Saw the TV Glow, which a review for that will be coming out in about a week and a bit's time because it's almost out in the UK and I can talk about it. 
Um, and then the last one is a coffee table, which all three of those movies are completely different. And to be honest, I felt like we're now maybe turning the corner on what has been not a great year for horror movies overall. Um, I kind of feel like the goods are coming in the back half. So yeah, Long Legs for me gets a five. Absolutely loved it. Cannot wait to see it again. We'll watch it many, many, many times. Osgood, Osgood Perkins is the real deal. You'll all eventually catch up to how great he is. Please check out his back catalogue of movies. So there we go. Uh, all that's left for me to say is thank you very much for checking out this episode of the podcast under the stairs if you're checking us out on YouTube please hit us a like a subscribe and ding the bell that way you'll be notified every time I upload a brand new video to the internet you can of course interact with me in the comments below have you checked out Long Legs did you enjoy it or was it all hype no substance was it too slow for you let's start a dialogue below and see what you guys made of the movie are you with me is it the best horror movie you've seen this year or did it come in painfully average for you let me know uh, if you're checking us out on spotify or the anchor app where you can do video podcasting um please hit subscribe there and answer the question that pops up at the end of all the recordings um similarly if you're checking us out on the audio versions of the the podcast on any of the podcatchers out there um subscribe to that rss feed there's over 1300 episodes of content dating back over a decade now um, so you get access to all that straight away and you will always get a brand new episode as and when it drops thank you very much for checking out this episode of the podcast under stairs there is so much content coming over the next couple of weeks uh, so keep your eyes peeled the next planned episode that will be dropping after this one is our look at season 2 of Inside Number 9 so until then whatever you are what the time zone is and what we are up to in this big bad world of ours please take care of yourselves out there this is Duncan McLeish broadcasting live from under the stairs and I am signing off <laughs>